Welcome to BCIT's Being Devo at Home Edition. I, um, my name is Marco Visick, and I will be the moderator for the next 50 minutes. Do apologize, I had a little bit of technical difficulties there. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that BCIT campuses are located on unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples, including the territories of the Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish nations. We are grateful to be here. Our session this afternoon focuses on engineering and engineering related programs, but I do encourage you to stay tuned after our session for academic upgrading, apprentice services and trades and apprenticeship presentations. For some of you, this may be your first time attending an online info session. We are using the Zoom webinar product and we are recording this session. On this platform, you can see and hear me, I hope, and, uh, the, and you can also see and hear the speakers, but we can't see or hear you. We will be giving brief overviews of BCIT's programs that uh, you may be aware of and some that you'll hear about for the first time. Our speakers aim to give you ideas for your future career paths, and we know you'll have questions on um, either the bottom of your screen or on the side of your screen, depending on your screen layout, you'll see a Q&A feature. And we'd like you to use this feature to ask questions this afternoon. Um, I do encourage you to wait for our Q&A period, the portion at the end of the presentation. However, feel free to type in the questions as they come up during the session. And uh, we will have a team of amazing program advisors assisting with answering these questions for you. So let's get started. A little brief agenda here with welcome and introductions, which I've done part of. And again, we'll do the overviews of the programs, a question and answer period, and then uh, there will be some information on contacting us at the end. Um, I would like to welcome, and it is with pleasure to welcome and introduce you to Dr. Stephen Kwan. And he is the Associate Dean for Engineering and Geospatial Technologies from the School of Construction and the Environment. Uh, he's here to say a few words of inspiration. So, Stephen. Thank you, Marco. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, BCIT Big Info. Uh, as Marco said, my name is uh, Stephen Kwan. I am an Associate Dean in the School of uh, Construction and the Environment. It's wonderful to see so many of you joining us today. Uh, it's also great to see so many of you considering studying engineering at BCIT. The engineering programs at BCIT are known for our connections to industry. We train graduates to be job ready and career ready. During this pandemic, we continue to offer strong programs. Almost all of our engineering programs has gone to a blended approach. So you could continue to gain hands-on experience in the essential components of our, some of our courses. The pandemic has also changed the way engineering is practiced. There are many new requirements and new opportunities, and also the need for new ideas. Our programs are up to date on the latest technologies. I encourage you to talk to our departments to see which program matches your interests. Feel free to ask questions, and I hope you enjoyed the big info. And we hope to see you in the various info sessions that we are organizing for the upcoming weeks. Thank you. Thanks so much, Stephen. Um, the next slide here that we have is a very brief uh, section overview on engineering, uh, but we can attest to engineering being more than what we can just capture on one page of information. Our fall delivery for 2020 this year was, um, and, and during these challenging times, some of our programs are being offered fully remotely, uh, while those that require on-campus learning are offered in a blended delivery mode, as Stephen has suggested. Um, for the programs that are, are in person, we've implemented and um, have all the required safety protocols like physical distancing, barriers, PPE, enhanced hygiene, much smaller classes, and dedicated tools and equipment. I wanted you to know that we were aware of and doing what we can during this pandemic. The schools in the sector for engineering is, are School of Transportation, School of Health Sciences, School of Construction and Environment, and School of Energy. 
Um, we'll hear from three representatives. John Diamond, Business Development Manager of the School of Transportation. Marita Luke, Business Development Manager of the School of Construction and the Environment. And myself, I'll be representing on behalf of the School of Energy. I am the Marketing Coordinator for the School of Energy. And I'll be covering off for the School of Health Sciences tonight. That being said, I'd like to welcome the first presenter of the evening, which is the dynamic John Diamond, uh, who will be representing the School of Transportation. John? Thank you so much, Marco. It's, uh, it's great to be here. And uh, I'm just going to quickly present uh, about five different programs in five minutes from the School of Transportation. So uh, I'll just start. Could we have the next slide, please? So you can see uh, you can see the people are working on that massive engine there, and uh, uh, that's that's typical of a ship's engine in in some fields, right? The marine engineering program it's four years in length. It has four academic terms and three sea phases. So three times you'll go out to sea if you take this program. Uh, the program uh, the entry is selective. That means that you are interviewed beforehand. And the selection process focuses on uh, first academics, of course, math is really important. We like it if you have good physics. And we look for leadership skills and teamwork, communication skills, and, uh, and very importantly, just a good interest in things that are mechanical. Uh, if you want to know what kind of work you do, then stop listening to me and read the slide because that's where you'll see it. Um, uh, successful marine engineers enjoy working with others to solve complex problems mechanical problems. Uh, it's an important thing. Uh, they've, it's broad-based. They focus on welding, machining, engines, electrical distribution, uh, HVAC, piping, controls. Uh, and so if you want to work in a broad subject area and encounter people, it's a good, rewarding program, and it leads to a rewarding career. Could I have the next slide, please? Uh, Marina, uh, prior to joining any ship, students receive basic safety training, such as uh, proficiency in survival craft or firefighting and uh, Marine Advanced First Aid. A lot of the courses are taught at the uh, Marine Campus, BMC, in North Vancouver, and a few are taught in the main campus in Burnaby, where I am right now, and, uh, and uh, there could even be some on Anasis Island. Uh, Courses can be academically challenging, such as applied mechanics, electronics, thermodynamics, engine theory courses, to name a few. The classes are limited to 16 people, so your faculty is uh, your access to faculty is uh, much greater than it would be in some other places. As the program progresses, the use of simulation training helps to develop and challenge the skills needed to work on complex ships propulsion systems. And could I have the uh, next slide, please? Uh, yes, the Marine Campus, we have strong industry connections to get students out to sea aboard ships. Typically, uh, placement on ships in, uh, from three to five months during the sea phases. These placements exist locally, nationally, and internationally. You know, our students have worked aboard ships such as bulk carriers, oil tankers, offshore supply ships, tugs, passenger ships, and others. Uh, companies usually provide transportation to and from the ship. They also provide accommodation and food while aboard. The goal of the program is to become a licensed officer in the third year, and then students can make up to 10000 bucks a month, something like that. Students are required to complete assignments and tasks that help them become qualified ship's officers so that one day they can become the chief engineer. And next slide, please. Uh, so I have uh, three aviation programs I want to talk about. Uh, aviation and aerospace, uh, of course, is global by its very nature. And, uh, and so I'm going to look at uh, two aircraft maintenance engineer programs, as well as a gas turbine program. So next slide, please. Uh, gas turbine technician. What I like about this program is it's relatively short. It's 36 weeks. And uh, graduates can get uh, can get jobs working on uh, on jet engines, right? So they got uh, the engines that uh, power jet planes. So they inspect, uh, they diagnose, and they repair these engines. Uh, and the skill is required all around the world. 
the standards, of course, in aerospace are extremely demanding. Uh, and I guess gas turbine engines are used in a number of other applications beyond uh, beyond jet planes. Are also used in some uh, uh, ships and 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 on land. Next slide, please. So we have two aircraft maintenance engineer categories. Uh, just as an aside, it's uh, these are federally regulated careers. So that means they're not uh, they're not part of the Red Seal program. The Red Seal programs, when you hear about a Red Seal mechanic, uh, that means that went, they went through a provincially mandated uh, program. This is federally mandated instead, so they, that Red Seal stuff doesn't apply. But they're still uh, they're still very much skilled trades. Um, an aircraft maintenance engineer category M, the N stands for maintenance, works on things like sheet metal, landing gear. Uh, the airframe and engines, and uh, they need to be able to troubleshoot and repair. They need to be able to install new equipment, and they need to certify that this stuff is all working well. So this is uh, this is complex. Uh, Sixty-four weeks, so so approaching two years, not just a little less than two years, uh, to take a, to take this program. Uh, having having a good hand skills is important. It's uh, uh, we had a, we had a student that uh, didn't think she had hand skills, but actually she did a lot of macro MA and found that that uh, the skill she had from that somehow applied in a lot of different places. So so that's a good one. And uh, let's go to the next slide, please, which is uh, aircraft maintenance engineer category E. The E stands for electronics. And, uh, and of course, again, we're uh, looking at installing and troubleshooting. We're looking at repairing. Uh, we're turning about... Uh, looking at whole systems. Of course, the electronics in airplanes has become more and more complex uh, over the years. This is now one of the most uh, uh, complex sets of systems in the entire world, you know, when we look at radar and navigation and radio. So, so, it's, uh, uh, so this is an incredibly complex uh, job but for people who want to work in the aerospace and who like to work on technology and air, uh, electronics. This is a really good uh, program. So aircraft maintenance engineer category E. And could I have my next slide, please? And either of those aircraft maintenance engineer programs, uh, after you've finished it and worked for a while, you might choose to go on and uh, they would lead into a degree in a Bachelor of Technology and Technology Management. Now, this program is, uh, is uh, takes applications all year round. It's an online program. The uh, admissions, it requires pre-assessment of your technical work experience and your current work situation. Uh, and you need to talk to uh, someone in D TGMT to get into it. We'll show you a slide on how to get to them. Uh, successful applicants start taking courses when they're accepted because you, you just start in the course uh, next available course. There's no need to wait for a start date. All the students in this, we put this in engineering because so often people who are in engineering then want to learn uh, uh, technology and management uh, uh, as, they, as they advance their careers. Because it's part-time in, in the evening, it's usually four to five years to complete. All the courses required for the program are, required, are scheduled on some rotation throughout the year. Some is in person, mostly online, uh, but any course will have delivery at least once in an academic year. There are lots of advanced technology electives to fit uh, to select and fit with different industry sectors. So if you uh, so that's really uh, the Bachelor of Technology, and that is all that I had to say. If you want to learn about that program, you should uh, talk to Megan or or Terry, and their email address are there. There, they, those that program doesn't really do information sessions. You're going to talk directly to either Megan or Terry. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Marco. Thanks so much, John. I did want to just touch base. Did we have an aircraft gas turbine technician here? We did that at the start. I thought we oh. put it at the start. Somehow, didn't we? It wasn't in the original ones. Gas turbine technician. We did talk about it. Uh, that's uh, It's a good one because it's such a short program and leads to a rewarding career working on gas engines, on, on, <laughs> on jet engines, right? We, we talked about that. Absolutely. Great. It just looks like it just came out of order it's, on that particular. It was important Thank enough to, it was worth saying twice. Just saying it twice. Absolutely. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. 
Um, thank you all so far. And um, again, I do remind everybody that uh, to feel free to use the Q&A boxes at the bottom uh, of your screen. Um, next area that, uh, our next program that we wanted to highlight for you in the School of Health Sciences is biomedical engineering. I'll just briefly touch on this. It is a two-year diploma program. Um, it is one of a kind in BC with uh, only, um, it's the only one in Canada specifically targeted to both hospital and medical device industries. As you can see, it applies science and engineering to healthcare and medical device industries, helps develop new medical devices and products or maintain specialized medical equipment that is used to support patient care. Grads can work in areas such as research, development, and product innovation, hospitals, laboratories, and private clinics, medical equipment field service, technology support and training, and medical product sales and marketing. Now, they have an information session scheduled for October the 22nd. Do um, make a note of this for yourselves, and uh, we will also be providing... Uh, at the end of the presentation, a link that you'll be able to register to the information sessions or to get to the information sessions um, registration page. So we will remind you about that at the end of the presentation. Next speaker that I'd like to welcome is the multi-talented Marita Luke, who will be representing the School of Construction and the Environment. Marita? Thank you, Marco. And yes, welcome to the School of Construction and the Environment. We have a wide range of engineering, design, and technology programs. As you will see, it's hard to describe all the programs we have in a short time, but I will try. And I hope something piques your interest. Please know that more details can be found on the website or on the program info session. Okay, let's begin. Thanks, Marco. The Master of Engineering in Building Science and Master of Applied Science in Building Engineering, Building Science are the very first master's degree at BCIT and the only programs of their kind in Western Canada. Thanks to the research of the BCIT Building Science Center of Excellence and the support of funding and funding from the province of BC, the grads are meeting industry demands. I think we all remember those leaky condos. Well, it's thanks to these kinds of research and programs that we are having better buildings. The program has a unique interdisciplinary approach that combines theory, practical skills, and durable, health, comfortable, energy efficient buildings training. If you are a student interested in sustainability and innovations in building technologies, consider one of these programs. Oh, just to let you know, the Energy Modeling Building Professionals is having an info session on October 21st. And uh, next slide. And are you interested in architecture, buildings, and design? One of the most popular programs we have is, and longest running programs, is Architectural and Building Technology, or ABET, or ABT. It is a two-year diploma program that combines theoretical knowledge with practical skills and technical training. Students learn from industry-based faculty, develop extensive practical skills for rewarding careers, and, the graduate, and graduate with an industry-recognized credential in design, development, construction, and building science sectors. Our grads are job-ready and highly sought after. Many employers are looking for our ABT grads or ABET grads. In the second year of the program, in addition to common academic core, students take an elective in one of the, these three areas, architectural, building science, economics, forward slash construction operations. <laughs> now, I have some good news. Just set up this red, um, info session, and it's for architectural building technology, and it's on November 4th at 4 p.m. Oh, November 4th at 4 p.m. And Building on the strong reputation of the ABT program, the architectural science degree was created. The Bachelor in Architectural Science is a full-time four-year program that delivers a broadly based technically current curriculum on theoretical and applied aspects of architectural science. Students develop the technical, artistic, and managerial literacies necessary for advanced placement as architectural technologists. If you're interested in pursuing uh, further educational opportunities towards professional designation, such as a master's in architecture, this is perfect. 
And good news again, the ArcSci info session is on November 4th at 5 p.m. So these two are on the same day. So um, feel free to register for that. And I'm sure those are going to be very popular. Now, there's a, you're going to laugh. There's a big title there, Architectural and Structural CAD and Graphics Technician. Um, and it's drafting for short, basically. This technical program is completed in less than 10 months. It's a very popular program. And the program offers two areas of specialization. And that is in architectural and structural. Applicants must indicate areas of specialization on their application. These programs offer, um, offer training for a variety of applications in architecture, structural engineering, building construction, and industrial applications. Programs integrate drafting and computer applications with design skills necessary for protection of complete sets of working, working drawings. And finally, in this big bucket, we have the new residential builder license. The province of British Columbia through licensing and consumer services or LCS is now requiring that individuals and general, contract, general contractors for residential construction meet the requirements of an enhanced licensing system. This is to safeguard the home buyers by requiring existing builders and new licensees to meet higher standards that are required in the BC residential sector. BCIT has been designated as one of the education providers. And last but not least, I have the Passive House Construction. Are you interested in learning more about zero energy buildings, the BC Energy Step Code and the Passive House Standard for Part 9 buildings? Thanks to our Zero Energy Buildings Learning Center and High Performance Building Lab, we have five fully online zero energy buildings um, courses tailored to, to busy construction professionals. They focus on providing you with hands-on demonstrations and construction problem solving. This ensures you learn using construction mock-ups and real project examples. Our courses are delivered by a diverse team of industry expert instructors. Oh, I made it through the um, architectural section and now next to the civil engineering section. If you're interested, um, oh, Marco, next slide. If you're interested in a diverse, rewarding and challenging profession, consider civil engineering. Civil engineering is one of the oldest programs at BCIT since 1964. Now in 2007, the BCIT or at, in 2007, the BCIT civil and structural program became the four-year civil engineering bachelor of engineering program. A few, a few years later, the program was nationally accredited by the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board, a milestone as the first accreditation of a non-university civil engineering program in Canada. We're so proud of it. Civil engineering and technologists team together to plan, design, construct, and maintain road and rail transportation systems, port and airport facilities, bridges, tunnels, dams, and buildings of all types water, gas, and oil pipelines, energy generating facilities, water, air, waste, and treatment plants. It goes on. Uh, learn more about civil engineering on November 4th info session. So this one is already getting full. So please sign up. Now, civil technology part-time studies programs and courses. We have an info session for that one on October 14th. Uh, this, this program is offered during the weekday and evenings and are held in classrooms or labs at BCIT Burnaby campus. You can just take one or two PTS courses or complete a part-time associate certificate or the part-time certificate. What I like about this is that this program provides continuing education and professional development opportunities for individuals in various civil technology fields. Thank you, Marco. Next slide. Now, BCIT is one of the few educational institutions in Canada offering a bachelor's degree in construction management. And construction management was one of the first Bachelor of Technology programs at BCIT as well. This is a degree completion program. It provides years three and four of a four-year bachelor's degree. Applicants must have the equivalent of two years of post-secondary training prior to admission. You will learn techniques to help you manage people, equipment, and money, schedule and plan, lead projects and teams, 
understand and apply relevant legislation, make big decisions, and more. The CIQS, or Canadian Institute of Quantity Surveyors, has accredited this program as meeting the educational requirements for professional quantity surveyor graduates from BCIT, especially in the architectural building program. Learn more at Construction Management Info Session on November 3rd. Hope you can make it to that one as well too. Construction drawings, construction estimating, construction operations, construction supervision are all examples of programs that help serve the needs of construction industry. Uh, next slide. Hope I'm not going too fast, but I have a lot more to go through. Um, the part-time, full-time environmental engineering program is one of the first Bachelor of Technology degrees at BCIT as well. As a full-time program, the two-year program is similar to years three and four of a degree. The part-time option is great for people working full-time to take and this program gives additional skills and knowledge that engineering and science grads require to successfully work in environmental assignments or sustainability management. The, and the fully online advanced certificate in building controls energy management was developed in partnership with industry to meet the growing needs for individuals with both energy management and building controls ex expertise. They're having an info session on October 14th. I might have missed, there's an info session for env environmental engineering on November 4th as well. And the fully online, part-time, self-guided, advanced certificate in community energy management also has an info session on October 19th. And also the most popular one we have is the Sustainable Energy Management Advanced Certificate Program. This was developed in partnership between BC Hy Hydro, Fortis BC and BCIT with funding from Natural Resources Canada. Uh, the program is designed to support employment opportunities in the field of sustainable energy management with a focus on energy demands of commercial, institutional, and industrial and community facilities. And the info session is on October 14th, and it is almost getting full. Next slide. Now, the advancement, Advanced Certificate in Renewable Energy, Electrical Systems, Installation and Maintenance, RESUM for short, is needed because technical, technological advances have been made in the area of electrical installations for renewable energy are currently being implemented as a practical level. This is the first program of its kind that addresses the need to teach renewable re energy resources. There is an urgent need to have trained workforce that can perform the tasks necessary to install commission, repair, and maintain the practical equipment associated with the technology involved, like photovoltaics, geothermal, and wind turbines, and more. And the Advanced Certificate in Automated Controls, Installation, and Maintenance, ASIM for short, yes, this group likes its long titles uh, and acronyms, will build upon the knowledge and skills evolved during an electrician apprenticeship or an engineer's practical training and experience. The increasing complexity of industrial, industrial automated control systems demands installation and maintenance people who are computer literate and who can communicate with coworkers who often be like themselves working across disciplines. And I'm almost there with a couple more, a few more. Um, the next slide, please. When they say GIS is everywhere, everywhere it really is. Uh, this program falls under Applied Natural Sciences, Computing, Health, and here in Engineering. GIS is used in environmental management, land use planning, engineering, natural resource management, transportation, real estate, utilities, business and marketing, mineral exploration, health and social services. It goes on. It's a kind of computer information system that integrates spatial data uh, to solve real world problems. Now the advanced uh, certificate, certificate in GIS is designed for a person with a full-time career who needs to add some GIS knowledge to their existing skill set, but not be a major component of their job. The advanced diploma program in GIS is aimed at university or college graduates who seek an intensive technical education that will prepare them for a career in GIS. And the Bachelor of Technology in GIS covers the same courses as the advanced diploma in the advanced additional studies in management, liberal arts, and includes GIS works. 
And the next slide. Geomatics is the art and science of measuring, storing, managing, and presenting of spatial, geospatial data. It has a rich history and exciting future where rapidly changing technology is applied directly to sustainable management of the world's resources. Geomatics consists of a wide range of topics, including GPS technology, field surveying, cartography, geodesy, land use planning, photogrammetry, drones, hydrography, and cadastral studies. And the Geomatics Technology Program offers a two-year diploma in geomatics with the choice of either pursuing a career or continuing a further two years in the Bachelor of Science in Geomatics. And the next info session is October 29th. Now, the next one is um, interior design. It is more on the design side of engineering. It is one of our busiest departments, and I'm proud to say it has got so much to offer. The interior design is an exciting, rewarding career that draws upon creative technical problem solving and to improve the function and quality of interior spaces. BCIT offers a four-year Council of Interior Design Accreditation, or CETA, accredited Bachelor of Interior Design with both full-time and part-time study options. The first year of study is designed as a foundation year, a certificate, and students who complete the second year of the program will obtain a diploma. Students will receive a bachelor degree after completion of the four-year program. Graduates are eligible to write the NCIDQ exam upon completion to become a registered interior designer. It is so popular, just to let you know, that it filled up in two weeks, so it is all full. So message me later if you want to find out how to reach and find out more information. And I am on my last slide now, and mining products are also everywhere. Welcome to this exciting field of mineral exploration and mining engineering. Students have the flexibility of preparing for careers as mineral exploration and mining technologists, or as a mining and mineral, mining and mineral resource engineer. Our two-year mineral exploration and mining technology program provides a path to registration as a technologist. Our four-year mining mineral resource engineering degree program builds on a 50-year track record offering mineral exploration and mining diploma as well as industry relevant engineering and trades programs to a path to a professional engineer. So skills gained in this program will help you to solve a wide range of technical problems in and diverse mineral industry settings. Register for its next info session on October 28th. Ah, now I can take a breath. This wraps up our school construction and environment programs. Thank you for listening, and I wish you all the best in finding your career path. Hope to see you at BCIT. And if you have any questions, message me through chat. Thank you, gang. Thanks so much, Marina. That was amazing. Uh, again, uh, for all of you uh, listening online, please do use the Q&A chat box. I think I've seen it pop up a few times, and you are using it, thankfully. Um, and you've heard a lot about those specific information sessions, and you'll hear a few more from me when it comes to the School of Energy. Um, at the end of this particular information session, there will be a, a link that will send you some information, uh, send you to get the information, how to register and do all of that. Um, I will be your final speaker of the evening with the School of Energy programs, uh, and we are running a little bit behind schedule. So I am going to encourage you to use the Q&A uh, in the box. I'm going to try to wrap this up in, in a few minutes, but I do have, uh, there is a lot to cover in engineering in general. Um, I've broken it down uh, a little bit with, uh, and I started with our four-year accredited degree programs, both the Bachelor of Engineering degrees prepare our students for professional career in electrical and mechanical engineering. Both programs are accredited by the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board. You heard Marita say that as well about civil and our mining program. Um, and I, I want you to know that that is equivalent accreditation as, uh, as to what you would get at any university. Um, both of our programs here share a common first year with our diploma program, which I'll present to you in a few moments and give you a little bit better uh, understanding of what electrical mechanical engineering entails. Um, 
And both of these programs have a competitive entry after the first year where you would be choosing uh, whether or not you want to go into the four-year degree path or into the two-year diploma path. Electrical engineering is really an engineering discipline concerned with the study, design, and application of equipment, devices, and systems which use electricity, electronics, and electromagnetism. Mechanical engineering uh, is the engineering branch that combines engineering, physics, and mathematics principles with material science and design analysis, manufacturing, and maintaining mechanical systems. Um, these two are um, two-year diploma programs that are listed. The first two that we're listing in the two-year diploma programs is the electrical and computer engineering technology and the mechanical engineering technology. These are the two-year diploma programs for the degree programs. Um, electrical and computer engineering technology involves the design and development of new electrical and computer applications. Uh, again, it has a common first year, and in the second year, you're specializing in one of three options. Automation and instrumentation, which uh, the students undertake a comprehensive study of control strategies, measurement techniques, communication systems, and electronic and computer systems used in the automatic control of commercial and industrial equipment machines. Um, graduates would be employed in design, analysis, application, construction, and installation of measurement and control systems. Electrical power and industrial control offer students a foundation in the technology used in utility, industrial, commercial, and residential application of exactly that, electrical power and industrial control. Uh, graduates would be designing, programming, maintaining industrial control systems, um, even um, working in technical sales and marketing. Telecommunications and networks. Uh, the students learn the principles required to design, manufacture, and test telecommunication systems and networks. I love these programs that have these names are self-explanatory. Self um, the graduates would find careers in design, development, testing, commissioning, installation, and maintenance. Um, in either the diploma or degree program of electrical and computer engineering or electrical engineering is something that you'd be interested in revisiting. We are holding the program information session on October the 22nd at 530. Uh, under the information session registration page, you'll find it under electrical engineering as the title. And I do encourage you to register for that if you do want to attend. Next one, if you like working with computers and mechanical equipment and are intrigued by designing complex systems and enjoy troubleshooting and solving problems, the Mechanical Engineering Technology Program may be for you. Again, it has a first year that is a common year, and in the second year, you're specializing in one of three options, mechanical design, which is providing students with the theory and skills you need to work uh, as, a, as a qualified engineer technologist, uh, teaching machinery design, energy production, thermal and fluid systems, hydraulics, pneumatics, material science, instrumentation and control, computer aid design or CAD, and computer aid engineering, CAE. The second option is mechanical manufacturing, and it's designed to provide graduates with a solid understanding of the principles of mechanical engineering, develop the problem solving skills, and receive training in engineering design, computer applications, computer-aided design, manufacturing processes, communications, material science, and applied mathematics. The mechanical systems program, um, this option is um, providing comprehensive en engineering skills that can be applied in energy conversion, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, building environmental um, controls and energy management, and uh, plumbing and fire protection systems. Um, if either the diploma or the degree are something that you're liking, looking to revisit, uh, we will be hosting a program information session for that on October the 21st. You'll find that under the title of Mechanical Engineering. And again, I do encourage you to register for that. Continuing with the two-year diploma programs, and really our, our two-year diploma programs are, are the bulk of our programs. Chemical environmental technology programs is where students learn the latest chemical analysis techniques along with environmental science, 
process engineering and material technology with environmental protections in mind. It's really a program for people who like science, care about progress to sustainability, enjoy investigating problems, and, and can make a positive difference. Um, really, chemical and environmental technology is a big part of everyday life in most industrial processes. Um, there is a note here that I made that graduates who want to continue into a degree may bridge into a BCIT BTEC program or transfer to a university um, for a science or engineering degree. There is um, two options uh, that are second year within the chemical and environmental, analytical science being the interest of those students who would enjoy an increased emphasis on industrial uh, instrumental laboratory analysis, organic chemistry, environmental regulations, and science. Process engineering option, um, students would enjoy an increased emphasis on chemical and biochemical processes with um, a more in-depth in introduction to engineering principles and design software. If it's one of the programs that you're really interested in uh, revisiting and seeing again, uh, we are hosting an information session for that on October the 13th. Industrial Network Cybersecurity is one of our newest programs at BCIT, and it was really developed with a specialized graduate in mind. Um, we're currently in our second intake and expecting our first graduating class um, in this two-year diploma program in June of 2021. Now, companies on an industrial level where you have manufactured or large in manufacturing or large industrial plants, um, the operational technology that they use uh, has embedded hardware and operating systems and ethernet-based networking interfaces like a link to the internet um, that make them susceptible to the same types of electronic attacks, sort of like we can get our own home computers. Um, this program takes those students into a comprehensive study of those industrial measurements and control technologies, the computer information technologies that would be applied. And then of course the networking, the industrial networking and the industrial networking cybersecurity that's involved with those. Um, the graduates really are multifaceted to understand all aspects and systems being used and defending them from um, electronic attacks. Um, and, and really you could be working in an environment where you're designing, analyzing, configuring, providing technical services um, that are involving um, the application of industrial networks. We are hosting an information session for that on October 14th at 5 p.m. Again, I register, I encourage everybody to register for the information session so we can get you uh, all the pertinent information. Mechatronics and robotics is an exciting interdisciplinary field. Um, this program teaches the students to integrate technology from mechanical and electrical engineering, as well as including software engineering to design, modify, and maintain complex systems such as computer integrated manufacturing equipment, robots, and embedded systems. Um, graduates find themselves employed in a variety of roles such as assisting the design of robotic equipment used in food industry, uh, specific uh, specifying design, the safety control systems for industrial processes and manufacturing plants. Uh, you also might be designing and building automated equipment for the movie industry, production equipment, or submarines. Uh, we are hosting an information session on this program on uh, October the 21st. And I do want to highlight that the Mechatronics and Robotics program is a competitive entry program. Uh, therefore, the you are looking at uh, having higher, um, the, the best entrance entry requirements, um, the best marks basically that you, you'll need to get into that program. And all applications will be reviewed prior. Industrial instrumentation and process control uh, is a two-year diploma program and it's the only, kind, only program of its kind in British Columbia. Um, through theoretical and practical, which uh, we do a lot of at BCIT, of course, so you'll develop the skills needed to install, maintain, repair, calibrate, and pro program measurement and control instruments that are applied to industrial manufacturing processes. 
Hands-on practical training uses the equipment typically encountered in industry. And the building that we have set up for the training is impressive and true to real world. You learn to program computerized uh, control, programmable logical controllers, and microprocess instrumentation, as well as to install and maintain um, all of the field instruments that these computerized controllers rely on. If you are interested in seeing a little bit more, uh, finding out a little bit more about this program, we are hosting an information session for this on October the 19th at 6 p.m. I'm sure that a lot of you have tuned in to hear about power engineering as it is one of our most popular courses. And uh, the power engineers really, what their job is, is they operate, maintain, and manage industrial plants that are used, um, that use equipment such as boilers and refrigeration units. In every Canadian province and territory, only certified power engineers are permitted to operate such equipment. As I described in the previous program, the building that we're set up to have training is impressive and true to real world. Um, employment opportunities come in hospitals, chemical plants, oil refineries, breweries, breweries, which I could use one right now, <laughs> plants and paper, sawmill, schools, and institutions like BCIT. Um, the Power and Process Engineering Program is our two-year diploma program. It provides the background to take the exams for interprovincial certification as a third-class power engineer. The caveat here I want to throw out is that you have to have three months of qualifying time or work experience to complete that third year classification. The one year certificate program is um, uh, the sorry, the one year certificate program uh, is the same first year as the power and process two year program. So it's uh, the first year is common. And that one-year program gives you the background that allows you to take the exams for interprovincial certification, such as a fourth class certification as a fourth class engineer. We are following up on, with an information session on October the 19th at uh, 5 p.m. for that. So a back-to-back -back power engineering and industrial instrumentation uh, information sessions. The next program, or a few more programs, just a couple more, and I'm sorry, I'm running a little uh, over time, but we will get through this. The Technology Teacher Education Program, um, one of my favorite programs. Uh, the diversity I've seen taught in this program over the years would definitely appeal to those who like a variety of trades as well. Uh, this two-year diploma program is the program that enables you to teach technology education in BC middle and high school system. Yep, I am talking about being a shop teacher. <laughs> um, it is a program that's joint with uh, UBC, uh, transfers into UBC for the third year for the academic portion of becoming a, 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 a teacher. And uh, I, I fully believe this is an excellent opportunity for those who may want to change uh, from their trades into teaching. Um, and, and really, uh, it points out that the ongoing education opportunities or the progression in careers that you can get from an education at BCIT. We are um, having an information session on technology teacher education, or TTED is what we call it, um, on October the 20th at 6 p.m. Telecommunication Systems Technician Program. Um, when we talk, when we think about telecommunications, and depending on our ages, sometimes we'll think about a landline, and uh, others might think about a cell phone. Uh, well, really, this program is all of that and more. Um, you develop the skills ne skills needed to install, maintain, and repair electronic circuit and equipment of all facets of telecommunications. The program has a common first year, um, and then you specialize into one of the two following options. Telecommunications networks is the option providing training with current equipment encountered in the wired telecommunications industry with the current systems that we have in our homes even. Examples would be fiber optic, data communications, 
voice over IP, communications, and telephone switching systems. The radio systems option is, um, is where we teach you to install, maintain, and repair video, uh, video, radio frequency telecommunications equipment and related electronics equipment. For example, um, the communications in emergency vehicles for the ambulances, fire and police departments, or even marine communications on boats. Uh, the radio systems option is the only program of its kind in British Columbia. So we do, do um, have a, a lot of that at BCIT. Both options are directly transferable to the job industry and some of the employers, which I could highlight and you'll recognize most likely, Shaw, Telus, Rogers, Bell, Microserve, Microserve, and of course the RCMP. Uh, we are doing an information session on this program on October the 13th, just next Tuesday at 5 p.m. I do encourage you to register for that if you wanna hear more. The final program I just want to highlight for you is our Bachelor of Technology in Electronics, and this is a part-time studies BTEC program. It's going to get you that degree uh, on a part-time studies level, and one of the, and the requirements really are having a diploma in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Technology Program, which we talked about uh, earlier in the session, and or you can have a nationally accredited program that's uh, related industry technology discipline from uh, another school. Um, you can have an equivalent level of education at the post-secondary level and registration as an applied science technologist with ASTTBC, uh, and that could, will be considered. And we do really want you to have a, a minimum of six months uh, relevant work experience for that. Uh, really, again, it's a testament of ongoing education through part-time studies at BCIT as well. Do um, If you do want to find out a little bit more about this program, we will be combining this into the information session on October 22nd with the electrical engineering program. And finally, um, this is a slide that you'll be able to find out a little bit more information about us in general. Um, the one address that we would like you to remember is bcit.ca slash experience. You'll be able to find out about attending an information session, registering for those information sessions. You'll be able to do the 360 degree virtual campus highlights, connect with a program advisor and learn more about admissions and upgrading. Before we go to the q and I just wanna stop and thank all of our program advisors for all of the questions that they've answered. And we will continue answering the questions as best as we can for the next. And we're probably gonna give it just a couple of minutes uh, because we are out of time. Thank you all for attending this, uh, this afternoon, this evening, and um, hopefully we'll see you at BCIT. Thank you very much.